Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virtual Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends, connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. Creatures to meet, it's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Small Fry School. I'm Shauna, and I'm so excited to be here again with you today. You can see us every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Alaska time. If you have any questions today, be sure to text them to the number in the description below. As you can see, I'm wearing a mask today just to be extra safe. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge that I live and work on the land of the Aleuctic Sukbiak people and that their rich heritage continues to enrich our community. So last week, we talked about sea urchins. And we talked about how they have special body parts that help them to exist in their habitat. So they have spines for protection, they have a mouth, and you can see their teeth right there. And then they have two feet, which they use to help get food to their mouth and also for walking. And sea urchins give really good hugs. We also made sea urchins out of some Play-Doh and toothpicks. And we want to thank you so much for sitting in the photos and sharing your great creations with us. This week we're talking about sea anemones. So just like a lot of the animals that we've learned about while we've been talking about tide pools, sea anemones also have special body parts that help them in their habitat. Let's take a look at one of those now. Anemones have one foot that they use to hold onto rocks. Most of the time they stay in one place and don't move. But sometimes they don't like their home anymore, so they move to another place. They do this by gliding along like a snail. But they also move like this. This is how they swim. It's so amazing how they use their whole bodies to swim. How do you like to swim? I like to swim like a frog. Can you guys swim like a frog? Yep, let's try that. Well, sea anemones also have lots of other special body parts that help them. So let's take a look at some other parts of a sea anemone. A sea anemone's mouth is located in the center. Can you find it? There it is, that's your mouth. And that's also where waste or poop comes out of. She has so many tentacles to catch food. Her tentacles sting her prey. Sea anemones wait for their food to come to them, 
so when an animal blows into the tentacles of the anemone, it gets stung. This sea anemone has found a yummy snack. She will close and begin eating her food, just like this. When she's done, she opens up again and poops. Sea anemones are so awesome. It's amazing how they use their tentacles to help them eat as well as for protection. So now I'd like for you to meet some of the sea anemones we have here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And I have a friend helping me out today, Kim. You guys have met her before, and she is going to help us feed some of the sea anemones we have. So let's go over to the cam other camera. So you can see here we have two anemones, and these are painted anemones. And it looks like they're one, but they're actually just sharing the same rock. And here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, we can touch the sea anemones. We just want to use one or two fingers and be real gentle. And if you can see, if you try and touch their tentacles, they'll kind of like stick to you a little bit. And that's how they catch their food and move it into their mouths. So now Kim is going to show you how that works. And when they eat, they'll kind of close up around their food. Be curious why, when I touch them, they don't sting me. And that's because I'm a lot bigger, so I don't really feel the stinging. I just feel it a little bit sticky. And this sea anemone actually ate a little bit earlier. And if you can see right there, it pooped. So you can see how they're using their tentacles to close up around their food and eventually they'll move that food into their mouths. So while they, they eat, let's take a look at some of the other kinds of sea anemones we have here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. The plumose anemone has shorter tentacles and a longer, thinner body. Here you can also see it's closed up, which it does when it's sleeping, eating, or for protection. The crimson anemone has longer tentacles. Here you can see its mouth in the center. All anemones close up when they're eating. Here you can see it actually has food. The burrowing anemone has a long body that stays most of the time under the sand or the rocks, and its tentacles are bioluminescent. So here we are, we're back with our painted anemones, and you can see how this one here is starting to kind of close up a little bit. But we're going to give them some time to enjoy the rest of their meal. I want to thank Kim so much for helping us out today. And we're going to move on to our next activity, and you're going to need some friends and a little bit of space. But before we leave, do these sea anemones remind you of any other creature? They remind me of jellyfish. And sea anemones are actually cousins to jellyfish. And they have stinging tentacles as well. All right, are you ready to, to do some stretching and some activities? You're going to need a friend and a lot of space. Look, I have a friend with me here today. This is Dash, and he is a sled dog. 
and is part of Alaska 529. Dash also has another friend with him today. And Frankie is with us. I have so many friends today. I don't even know what to do. So we are going to do a little bit of stretching, and Dash is going to help me out. All right, so we're going to stretch like an anemone. So first, reach your hands above your head and wiggle your fingers like tentacles. All right, and then we're going to lean to our right and wiggle our fingers like tentacles. And then we're going to lean to the left and do the same. And then in the video, you saw how they close up when they sleep or eat. So we're going to do that now. And we're just going to bring our tentacles in and go all the way down and touch our toes. And then we're finished eating. So we're going to bring our tentacles all the way back up. And we're done eating. And so now we can just relax and sway around in the water. Um, so sea anemones do have some predators, um, and their predators are immune to their stinging. So they are starfish can eat them, as well as flatfish and other kinds of fish as well. Fabulous. We have a question for Dash. Ooh. So Dash, what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, I'll speak for Dash. Since Dash is a sled dog, he loves to run, of course. Do you guys like to run? I don't really like to run that much. I'm more of a fast walker. Um, we have another question for Dash. What does Dash like about the Sea Life Center? Dash, what is your favorite part about the Sea Life Center? Dash loves the small animals that other people might not see and, and creatures that don't even look like they're animals. Those are my favorite, too. So Dash was really lucky and found a tube room while he was here. And you can take a look at what we found there. And if you'll notice, when you go to touch them, they shrink back inside as a form of protection. So tube rooms are a lot of fun to watch. There it goes. Fun. All right, that was so amazing. I'm glad you found that, Dash. So do you guys have any other questions? Make sure that you text um, those in now, because we're going to have a question and answer session uh, going on for a bit now. So why doesn't Nemo get stung? So Nemo has a special relationship with the sea anemone, and is also doesn't get affected by the stinging. And so they can actually live with the sea anemone, and they use that as protection for themselves and their, their nest or their babies. So you can see the Nemo clownfish here and how they like to spend their time around the sea anemones. So Frankie, when should kids start to think about what they want to be when they grow up? That's a great question. It's never too early to start. Really what you want to do is find what you think is fun and then research and, and see what it takes to be that. What did, it, what, were you, what did you want to be when you were a child? So when I was a child, I liked to draw, so I became a designer. And then I decided I liked the ocean, so I became a scuba diver. And I loved fish so much then now I work here so that I can tell all of you about fish all of the time. Rebecca, what did you like to do when you were a kid? Um, I also liked exploring the tide pools and the ocean. But when I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor for kids. Um, and life just led me in different directions because I love the ocean. So Rebecca wanted to be a doctor for little kids, but then loved the ocean so much that she decided to do this instead. So if you're in the tide pools in Alaska, it is most likely that you will see the same sort of anemones we have here at the Sea Life Center. So it is probably safe to touch them. However, it's always a good idea that if you see a plant or animal that you don't know for sure, you shouldn't touch it. If you do decide to touch one, 
just make sure that afterwards you wash your hands very well with soap and water to make sure that you don't have anything um, left behind that might be harmful to you. Oh, I love everything about the Sea Life Center. I, I don't know that I can just pick one, but if I had to, I probably would pick the sea lion because it reminds me of my dog. <laughs> it's true. They do look a lot like your dog. My dog is really fat, so it looks more like a seal than a sea lion. Um, but yeah, they're my favorite too. Um, we actually have a question. Okay. Why do they poop out of their mouth? <laughs> right, that's a little bit strange. But every creature has a different way of functioning properly. And for them to be streamlined and efficient, they use their mouths to take in food. And then it's easier for them to just get rid of the waste through the same way. Um, and then another question. Do other fish have the same relationship with the anemone as the clownfish? That I am not 100% sure, but I don't believe so. Um, the clownfish is really the only one that I've ever seen, and it is a very um, unique relationship. But it's fun because if you can find an anemone, you can usually find a clownfish. All right. Well, I want to thank my friends, Dash and Frankie, for being here with me today. And I want to thank them so much for their ongoing support that makes Small Fry School possible every week. You're so, so welcome. Thank yeah, you so we much for having us. Enjoyed, and you can go and have a fun time at the Sea Life Center. Wow. Yay! Bye. All right, so now we're going to move into story time. Um, but if you haven't joined our Facebook page yet, please be sure to do that. The information is below. And if you'd like any more information about what Alaska 529 does, you can also find their information in the description below. So let's move on. This week we are reading Anemone is Not the Enemy. So you guys enjoy the story time, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Anemone is Not the Enemy by Anna McGregor. I'm so lonely. I hate being stuck here with the boring barnacles. I thought I was fun. High tide. Oh look, new friends. Oh no, it's a anemone. Whatever you do, don't get too close. Why? Hi guys, what's happening out there? Don't ask. This shell's taken, buddy. I bet you've seen some cool things. Pirates, mermaids, kraken. Tell me everything. Hello? This is making me nervous. Low tide. Uh-oh. Occupied. Sting! Sorry, I can't help it. As soon as the tide comes in, we're out of here. I'm trying to make friends, not enemies. So why do I always sting everyone? I did it to the seahorse. I did it to the starfish. I even stung the sea cucumber what a pickle that was. It's no wonder everyone avoids me.
high tide. I'd rather take my chances out there. Good luck, clowny. Look away. I'm naked. Hi. Nice hair. Not hair, but thanks. This rock pool is great. It is? At last, my dream home. King Tide. Uh-oh. Anemone, I'm coming in, but I'll... Here comes the octopus. Sting! Wow! I didn't sting you! We're good together. Oh boy. Finally, I've got a friend. But I suppose you'll be going back to the big, exciting ocean? Nah, we've got a good thing going on here. The ocean. Believe me. Uh -huh. Did you know clownfish and sea anemones have a special relationship? Clownfish are immune to sea anemones' poisonous tentacles, and these provide the fish with protection from predators. In return, clownfish clean sea anemones by eating algae and other food scraps off them. The scientific name for two species helping one another is symbiosis. Hermit crabs don't grow their own protective shells like other crabs. Instead, they must use a discarded sea snail shell for protection from predators. As a hermit crab's body grows, it must upgrade to a larger shell. Tides are the rise and fall of oceans, caused mainly by the moon's gravitational pull on Earth. The end.